The single speed bike market is a pretty interesting one. And for what is an arguably niche type of bike, there is an amazing amount of variety hidden deep within their ranks. These days, they tend to range from urban hybrid bikes to track inspired road bikes, all the way through to single speed gravel bikes. So in order to get a better grasp on the vast array and choice that is out there, our videographer, Ed, and a self-confessed single speed lover has put together this curated selection of five bikes. So Ed, what have we got? So starting with the cheapest, we've got the Elop City Bike 500. We have the Steed Thoroughbred. We have the Queller Oxford, the Genesis Flyer, and the Temple Lightweight Single Speed. So first off, we have the Elop City Bike 500. Ed, what can you tell me about this? Okay, so the first thing to talk about with this one is the price. So it's 250 pounds, which makes it by far the cheapest on test, which, you know, you have to say is a pretty good, pretty good price. I mean, you can go on eBay and find single speeds for less than that, but for a brand new bike, that's pretty good. You know, if this was a fully geared bike coming in at that price, that'd be a bit of a red flag, because you'd be thinking, well, what components have they used to achieve that price? But that's the beauty of single speeds because it's so simple in a mechanical yeah. sense. Like I think you can kind of trust that there's not that much that's going to go wrong with it. So I think you can take quite a lot of confidence in this bike. Okay, cool. So gear ratio wise, it doesn't look huge. What actually is it? It's a 44 18. Okay. So it's, it's a pretty sort of social gear if you're using flat pedals. It's really easy to get started. It's great if you're starting at traffic lights or, you know, just if you have a stop start commute to work. But it can hold a fairly decent speed. You can sort of cruise at about 16 miles an hour before you start to spin out. Okay. So, and which then, for town riding is pretty, you know, it's, yeah. isn't too bad. And I guess if you do have some hills on your commute or your ride around town, it's going to make it pretty, pretty yeah. easy. It's not going to struggle too much with those. Also worth mentioning, this bike does come with a flip-flop hub in the wheel. So if you wanted to, you can flip the wheel over and then run it with a fixed gear. It doesn't come with the sprocket, which is fixed, but you can buy them from Decathlon for probably not very much. So are there any drawbacks with this bike? There's a couple. So the first one would be that the it has a fixed saddle orientation and it's kind of tilted back. It could be a problem for some people. I actually found it really comfortable, like the orientation was right for me. Yeah. And the saddle's probably like the most comfortable of all the ones on test. Okay. Which is good. But yeah, if you if that didn't work for you, you would have to get a whole new seat post. Okay, cool. And then what other drawbacks? The other drawback is it doesn't come with eyelets for a rack for a rear rack, which I just think for a bike, which I think, you know, the only real reason why you'd be getting this is to sort of ride around town or city riding, commuting, and a rack mount is just a bit of a... It's a bit, it's of, a a bit no of a no-brainer. Brain, yeah. I just, I don't really think that any bike meant for that purpose should ever come without sure. one. Tell you what though, for a bike that's only 250 pounds, I think it cuts a really clean look. Often you can find bikes cheaper that, you know, they try and do too much, but this has kept it simple and it looks quite classy. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really like about it is in like, I don't think, it doesn't look like it's worth 250 quid. If you start to look closer, like obviously the components are on the sort of cheaper side. Yeah. But in terms of the design, it's pretty timeless looking. It's got a very minimal design, but it's not boring to look at. It's got the drop seat stays, which is, you know, quite a sort of modern feature. I think it just looks really clean and elegant. I think it's a smart looking bike. Now, one of the most important things is how the bike actually feels to ride. So, what is it like to ride? It's really nice to ride, I must say. It's really comfortable. You've got 32 millimeter tires on there at the moment, and it can take up to 37 millimeter tires, which yeah. is pretty good. Uh, it's got a full steel frame, which again, nice. for the price, is really good. So a lot of comfort comes through that. It's got a very upright riding position, as you might imagine, obviously the flat bars, very short stem. So it does, as much as it's sort of nice and sort of you can cruise along quite comfortably, it is also quite twitchy. And does feel a little bit nervous yes but also you know kind of good for cornering and it's you know it's very nippy if you're weaving in and out of traffic and yeah. you know tight spaces to be honest for a bike that costs 250 pounds brand new bike that costs 250 pounds i really don't think that there's much to complain about if you just want something you don't want to spend much money on a bike you just need something to get around then look no further basically So next up we have a bike from Queller. Ed, what is this gorgeous thing we have behind us? So this is the Queller Oxford from the Varsity range. So you've got the Oxford, the Cambridge and the Edinburgh. Yeah. Difference between them is they all just have different colourways. Worth mentioning, I've actually got one of these. Ah. <laughs> so I'm very familiar with this bike. That doesn't mean I'm going to be biased towards it throughout the test because as much as I love this bike, it has 
required quite a few tweaks of the spec in order to get it that way, but I'll yeah. move on to that a bit later. So how much does this bike come in at? So this bike costs uh, £529. It's uh, got a full steel frame, so it's a chromo steel frame. Well, it's a track frame actually, so it's got the track geometry as you can, well, as you can kind of see from looking at it. So it's pretty aggressive compared to the other bikes. 44-16 yeah. gear ratio, which is the highest, but I think a perfect ratio for this bike. You know, when you look at this bike, it's got deep wheels, it's clearly meant to be ridden fast, so to have the higher ratio makes perfect sense. It's got the flip-flop hub, this time actually does come with the fixed sprocket on the back. And this is the sort of bike that I can kind of imagine people wanting to ride fixed, more so than the other ones. It's got eyelets, which it's interesting that this bike does have eyelets and the Elox doesn't have eyelets. Yes, yeah. Because again, with the high gear ratio, I don't know how much you'd really want to weigh this bike down with stuff and a rack. And a rack in yeah. itself yeah. adds on a lot of weight. It's also the lightest bike on the test, so it comes in at 10.3 kg without pedals. And again, due to that sort of chromo steel frame, it's, uh, it's light, but it's extremely stiff. So it is a harsh ride on roads. It'll be great in a velodrome. On the roads, you feel absolutely everything through it. Also, I've never used bullhorn handlebars before, and I can't say that I'm a massive fan of them. Okay. So these ones, they've got quite a thin diameter. They've got this vegan leather uh, bar tape, which, you know, I'm all for vegan leather. But yeah, they are quite thin, pretty uncomfortable, and I just, I don't know what your experience is like with bullhorn handlebars, but I don't quite see why for a bike that's, you know, an urban bike, why you'd want them, because the main position that you're gonna want to ride in is out on the sides of them like that at which point you don't really have easy access to the brakes. So you're kind of either riding like that or riding like that. Yeah. So if you're descending, you're riding like this on the brakes, but that doesn't feel very yeah. stable to me. So on my one, I've the first thing I did, I changed those to drop bars. Mm -hmm. So now that I've got it dialed in, I absolutely love the bike. So yeah. riding it, it's quick. You could go for a higher gear ratio, depending on where you live. Like I ride it, obviously I, I clip into it. I don't really see this bike making too much sense on flat pedals. It's amazing what you can actually get up on this in terms of the gear ratio. When you clipped in sure. and you don't have the option to drop gears, you're yeah. like, well, it's either, I'm either getting up it or I'm pushing. Yes. And I haven't yet, and I keep challenging myself, I haven't yet found a hill that I couldn't get up. Ah, so, fantastic. Yeah. So what other drawbacks does this bike have? Obviously you've mentioned the bullhorn, handlebars that you're not a fan of. Personally, as much as I love the look of the wheels, I am just thinking that they're very heavy. So what was that actually like? They are heavy. I mean, they're, you know, they're a sort of uh, mid-section, 40 millimetres deep, so, you know, nice and aerodynamic. They are rather beautiful, in my opinion. But um, when you ride it, it's, out of all the bikes, it is by far the least comfortable. Mm. But the bike, I just don't think, is meant to be comfortable. I think it's meant to be fast. So I don't think it's uncomfortable by accident. Yeah. These are aluminium wheels. Yeah. You feel a lot through the road, like... It is quite jarring. And again, you've got the track frame, which is very stiff. On a smooth surface, it's absolutely fantastic and it's by far the fastest bike. Yeah. But, you know, the English roads aren't that smooth. Also, in terms of the comfort or lack thereof, you've got these 25 millimeter tires, which aren't great. I reckon you could squeeze a 28 millimeter in there. Might be a little bit tight on the rear, but I think that you'd then have all of the same riding characteristics, you know, aggressive and, you know, it's yeah. quite nippy and it'd still be light, but it'd just give you a bit more comfort, which it currently just doesn't really have. Bikes are often referred to as steeds, but in this case, we actually have a bike called the Steed Thoroughbred. And now, Ed, I'm pretty sure you're a big fan of this bike, right? I do. I absolutely love this bike. This is such a fantastic kind of no messing around, it knows what it is type machine, and I've thoroughly enjoyed riding it around. Okay, cool. So, uh, highlights. Talk to me about some of the best Highlights. Bits. So, it's a high tensile steel frame. So, it's very strong, very durable. A little bit on the heavier side, but it's, well, 10.7 yep. kg. So, you know, not vastly different from uh, the Quella, which I think was like 10.3. Yeah. What ratio are we running on this bike? Uh, this one, we've got a 46.18. Again, you've got the um, flip-flop hub. Yeah. That ratio complements the bike well. It's a softer ratio than on the Quella, but it's not as low as the Elops. Again, it's good for getting starting and stopping. It's a bit more forgiving on the climbs or little steep ramps. Yeah. So what other highlights are there? So one of the things I really like about this bike is the quill stem. And I'd say that for this sort of bike, there is an argument to say that a quill stem is more practical than your sort of more conventional stem spacer setup. You can, you know, with like two turns of an Allen key, you're, you know, lifting it up and down. You may want to have different positions for what you're using it for. If you're commuting to work, you want to have a bag on the front, you know, yeah. a bit higher. You can get down a little bit more poised for, you know, if you're going for like a longer ride. And yeah, like I say, it's just twist, lift, Titan, done. Also looks fantastic. It carries on the sort of traditional look of the bike and just, you know, more pops of chrome 
and yeah. I'm a sucker for anything chrome on a okay. bike. Now, of course, no bike is perfect. So what problems has this one got? Only one main problem, I'd say, and that is that the vegan leather handlebar grips, they have this stitching beneath them. And when you're kind of gripping on them when climbing, it just starts to irritate your hands very quickly. I mean, really, that is a very small problem to have because grips can be changed so easily. Well, exactly. So this bike clearly then is actually very good. It is very good. It takes, it's got 28 millimeter tires on the moment. Yeah. They're good enough tires. They're the Kenda Quest tires. Yeah. So they're, I mean, they're pretty cheap tires. Yeah. They're not the most supple feeling. Okay. But they're extremely robust. Right. So I don't think you'd be worrying too much about punctures on, you know, general road surfaces. The bike kind of just like bowls over yeah. most things. So now who do you think this bike is really best for? I'd say this bike is best for someone who is kind of looking for an all-rounder. So wants to use it for both commuting, riding around the city and like just sort of longer leisure rides. You've got the rack mounts and the gear ratio would, you know, you could add a bit more weight to this bike and still ride around quite comfortably. Whereas obviously you couldn't really on the Queller, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and it is, I've, you know, I took this out for a 50 miler to test it. That was like, really, yeah. Wow. And it did deal with the hills well. And it, there was two particularly steep ones. And I was very much just sort of like, you know, just, I wasn't really like sort of like spinning up it. I was just sort of like shifting my weight from each pedal, but yeah. it did get up it. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. So yeah, really versatile. Wheelbase is what, 103 centimetres, so kind of middle of the road, but it kind of, it corners really nicely. Flat handlebars, but they're not too wide. So, mm. you, you know, you can, it's quite nippy. There's not that much to say about it other than I just think it's a really good, really reliable, fun bike. So what does this bike come in at? So this bike comes in at £475, which makes it the second cheapest of the five. Yeah. Which, again, £475 is an absolute steal oh, as far as I'm concerned. Good. You know, you've got everything you need on this bike and at that price you can't really complain about it. And the frame itself, obviously high tensile steel, very strong. You could buy this bike and have it for the rest of your life. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna fall apart on you. So I think for £475, other than those, very little to complain about and I would swap the tyres for something a bit more supple. Something with the same amount of puncture protection, but just a bit more, kind of a bit smoother. And then I think you've basically got the perfect single speed bike. This is a gorgeous bike. Now this is the Temple, right? And it is utterly beautiful. Talk us through what we're looking at. It is, so this is the sort of boutique option mm. of the uh, bikes that we have on test. So it starts at 825 pounds, which I think some people would say is quite steep for a, yep. you know, a bike with only one gear. Yep. Basically you have to buy it as a custom option from Temple. But the, the main difference between this and the other bikes other than the price is that the frame isn't single speed specific. This has got a single speed conversion kit on it. So when you're looking at the price, you can sort of look at it as it's kind of worth the extra money because you're not limited to it being a single speed. You could then, if you wanted to run it with a full spread of gears. That's one of the things which I think justifies the higher price. So Ed, just run us through the spec on this. What are we looking at? Okay, so this one we've got Reynolds 520 double butted frame. It's the highest, you know, end frame in terms of frame material. We've got a 3915 gear ratio. When I'm riding along on this one, I do find myself spinning out quicker. Okay. It's got a bigger gear inch than the steed, yeah. but it just feels easier. Okay. And on longer rides, I do find myself getting a bit impatient because I'm sort of like, oh, you know, I could be going faster than this, but yes. then I'm really kind of spinning out. But it's ridiculously comfortable. Like these hoods are the most ergonomic hoods I've ever yeah. used. Like they're absolutely lovely. Uh, it's really smooth. I think the tires play a big part in that there. 28 millimeters. You could go with some pretty like rutted surfaces on it. And what was the saddle like then for comfort? Comfortable, although I found when I rode it in like proper cycling shorts, I was sort of sliding down it because it's got, it's quite a sort of shiny yeah. uh, vegan it's, leather, I believe. It's not the most grippy surface. It's though. not particularly grippy saddle, no. It's actually better suited to wearing like just like regular clothes. Sure. But on longer rides, I prefer to, you know, get the old Lycra's on. <laughs> so, um, also in terms of the ride feel, it's got a longer wheelbase than say the Steed. It's about 106 centimetres. And as much as that's very comfortable, you feel very planted, riding out of the saddle up hills, it does feel a bit sluggish. Okay. Like even though it's a lighter frame, it feels less responsive. I think mainly because of that longer wheelbase, it's a bit of a kind of a slog to get it up things. Yeah. But then it's a hell of a lot more comfortable. So I think that's kind of a trade-off. That's the trade-off. I think they have. wanted it to be comfortable as a consequence it's not the nippiest of bikes. Yeah. In terms of the looks of the bike, mm. this, is, this is the winner in terms of the looks of the bike. It's absolutely stunning. I don't think bikes ever needed to evolve 
visually beyond <laughs> that. You know what I mean? I do know what you I mean. I know you get some lovely modern bikes, but come on, parallel top is, is just lovely. You've got these lovely little details, the lugged fork. You've got the seat lamp, which is a bit of a work of art in itself. Just all these kind of beautiful little nuances. But then the Temple logo is just a sticker. It wouldn't stop me from buying the bike. No. But it's a bit it's like... It's one of those it's things like, of it. It's like, come yeah. on, like everything out there, there's been so much love and attention gone into the frame and then you just sort of whack a sticker on it, which a bit disappointing, but again, not really the end of the world. That's true. So who do you think this bike's really for? Well, someone who's looking to spend a bit more. Yeah. I think someone who's really into their single speeds and wants one that's sort of completely tailored to their needs. Like I say, this is a custom option from Temple, so you can choose what type of handlebars you want, your tyres, your saddle, when ordering. So someone who knows exactly what they want is after something a bit more luxury and is happy to spend a little bit more for it. I mean, I keep talking about the price like it's really going to break the bank. £825 for a bike isn't actually that bad. I mean, it's quite refreshing, frankly, for us to be talking about a bike on Cycling Weekly that's not worth north, north of you know, 10 grand. Yeah. So it's not actually that expensive expensive yeah. it's just i think a lot of people would see it as that for a single speed yeah. but then you can make it not a single speed so you can kind of look at it as investing in the frame yeah. with a single speed option and then you can upgrade it i think when you look at it like that it's not actually an unreasonable yeah. price that's true and it looks really nice hung up on my wall so i'm gonna be very sad when i have to give it back Now last up we have the Genesis Flyer and now this bike it looks pretty different to everything else that we've had in the video so far so talk us through it. Okay so what we have here is essentially a single speed gravel bike. Yeah. Genesis have updated the Flyer the last couple of years and taken it more down the gravel route you can see why it's you know such a popular thing. Yeah. But I mean considering that single speeds were already pretty niche as they are. Yeah. Then introducing a sort of gravel version of it yeah. doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense but I think if you consider gravel bikes to ultimately be drop bar hybrid bikes, yeah. this then makes a lot more sense. So what aspects of this bike make it gravelly? Okay, so the geometry, it's got an endurance geometry, so it's got a longer wheelbase, it's got a higher front end, slightly slacker angles. It's got these flare drop handlebars. It's got nice wide WTB all-terrain tires. It's got about as many eyelets as I think I've ever seen on a bike. It's got 22 eyelets, so you wow. could mount basically I'm still trying to work out a way that you could use every single eyelet at the same time. Haven't worked out. Um, you've got disc brakes. Yeah. So obviously you can't really have, you can't really go down the gravel route without having disc brakes, but the disc brakes are not great. They're uh, mechanical disc brakes. Yeah. They don't perform any better, in some cases worse than the rim brakes on the other bikes. Yeah. They would perform better in the wet though. So if you consider it as a sort of like all year round winter bike, you know, yeah. you could ride it, you know, in any weather. That's true. Are there any other downsides to the bike? Yeah, quite a big one for me. The Promax hoods mm. are absolutely pathetic. They are tiny. Like, you'll be able to see in the GoPro footage, there's, like, very little to hold on to. Yeah. So, and I'm thinking, you know, you can use this to go over really, like, rutted, quite extreme terrain, and yet all you've got to hold on to is this tiny little knoblet at the top. So I just think that it wouldn't take much for your hands to just sort of slip off if you're going down something really, you know, it's really choppy. I just don't think it's very safe. Okay, for sure. And then highlights, then. Clearly, there's a lot going on here. What was it actually like to ride? So this is by far the most fun bike to ride of all of them. Okay, like wow. by, by a mile. Yeah. If you're doing like a sort of blind test, I don't know how you'd do that, but <laughs> if you were doing a blind test, then this one would win like straight okay. out. It's the only bike that's got an aluminium frame. Yes. Normally, I'm sort of like, no, I like steel. I like sort of classic steel frame. But with this one, this is absolutely perfect. Looking at it, you're not going to assume that it's light. No. It's the second lightest on test. It's 10.4, I believe. Yeah. So only like a what, 100 grams below the Quella. Yeah. And that's mainly down to the double butted aluminium frame. And what I love about the bike is that with the comfort that comes through the 37 millimeter tires, yeah. with, you know, it's quite a good, it's got a decent tread pattern on it. Yeah. That gives you loads of comfort and stability. The aluminium frame with the smaller triangles with the dropped top tube makes it really, really responsive and light. So not only are you sort of cruising along really comfortably, when you get out the saddle, like you can, you know, you pick up speed like that, it's so responsive to get going. Yeah. So it's just, it's just fun. And okay, yes, they've gone for the sort of gravel aesthetic and it's got features found on gravel bikes. But, you know, this doesn't ever have to see any gravel. Like yes. these things are perfect for riding around town. Yeah. 
the roads in England could be just as treacherous as like off-road gravel tracks. Yeah. So, you know, this thing would be perfect for it. So some modern innovations, you might say, are actually quite good. Well, that, yeah, I've, I've kind of had to eat my words here because, you know, I'm a complete sucker for a horizontal top tube, that sort of classic thing. Nice still frame. Which all of them have got a horizontal top tube. But this is the one that's the most fun. This is the most fun to ride. <laughs> so my main, one of my main points for this bike is that, so it comes in at 700 quid. Yeah. But, um... I don't think I'd be able to bring myself to spend 700 quid on it when for an extra 100 quid you can get the Genesis CDA 10 which is yeah. basically the same frame but yeah that's got a full Claris um, group set on it so for a bike this capable yes. and this is going to sound a bit stupid because this is all about single speeds the only thing letting it down or holding it back is that it only has one gear sure so okay. if I want if I was going to buy a bike like this it would be for bike touring want to do it in great comfort and this would be perfect yeah with a full spread of gears but saying that and bringing it back to single speeds now for someone who does want to take advantage of the simplicity and the you know the reliability this is a fantastic option and you're better off having all of these extra features that the other bikes don't have rather than not having them that's true so what actually is the ratio on this bike then uh this is a 42 17. okay so it's the second lowest of the bikes which actually makes sense but over certain road surfaces i'd say this is actually the fastest bike Interesting. despite the fact that the quella has the capability to go faster yeah you're hitting it's like you're chattering along if there's any road imperfection and it does just slow you down yeah this just bowls straight over the top of it it's like smooth it's like yeah. a you know a magic carpet ride as yeah. they say so yeah i'd say in certain circumstances this is the fastest bike as well wow okay yeah. that's really impressive now not only is this bike a gravel bike which is a niche but it's also a single speed which is another niche who's this bike really for well i think that this could suit i don't think this is for any one person okay i'm sure that there is like a sort of subculture of people out there who just like single speed gravel biking yeah fine very specific but yeah. you know great fun i'm sure but then it's also perfectly set up for commuting town riding as well as off-roading and it's pretty quick as well it's fun to ride really fast on and go long distances as well as you know short commutes and the pissing rain you've got the disc brakes that can handle it so yeah. I think a lot of people could benefit from this bike. Gravel single speed bike sounds like one of the most niche things I've ever heard, but it's a lot more than that. So out of all of the bikes that you've had on test ed, which would you take home? Okay, well, I'm very tempted by this one. Yeah. If I could just take one now, I'm not spending my money on it, I'd absolutely just take this, because okay. I think it's the most fun to ride. But as I said, if I am spending money, I'd be more tempted to just spend the hunt a bit more and just get a fully geared version of it. Putting money back in. Putting money back in, the Steed. I okay. spend £475, get the Steed, and I just think that's a fantastic bike. It knows exactly what it is. It's very simple, perfect for what I'd be using it for, which is basically riding around town, but also some longer rides as well. And I just think that for 475 quid, you can't really complain. Well, Ed, thank you so much for putting so much time and effort into testing all of these bikes. Absolute pleasure. It's been incredibly insightful. Now, everyone, which bike would you choose? Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and we will see you again very soon.